Greetings. I'd like to share with you a few thoughts on the final week. I'm going to make this fast. I invite you, if you want to, to stop on any uh, frame and to look at it uh, at more depth, but I don't want to bore you. I know that people have things to do, so I'm just going to start presenting this. Um, for those who might not have a foundation, well, we have two words here that the luminaries were put in the heavenlies uh, for signs and for seasons. We don't understand either one of those words, so let's look at that. The word for sign in Hebrew is ot. The three-letter verbal root is to consent, ut. Hebrew is a verb-based language. Overwhelmingly, whether it is a noun, an adjective, a participle, or whatever it is, uh, it has a three-letter verbal root, and if we understand the root, it helps us to understand the word. Interestingly, uh, the root here is not consent. Hebrew does have a word that means to warn. Has heo. But, but the root of a warning or a signal is not to warn. It is to consent. Very interesting. Uh, Strong's 225 is used four times here, and it is unanimously translated to consent. Why would the root of a warning or a signal, uh, as, as, as the Almighty put in the heavens, be to consent? And I offer to you it is because the root of whether or not we're watching is, do we consent to his system? Do we consent to what he's doing? If we don't consent to his system, all it is is it's nothing to us. If we consent, then we're going to see it. Other signs to which we consent. If we don't study and obey these signs, we're going to be driving dangerously. If we don't study and consent to the signs in the heavens that our Creator is trying to give us, we're going to be living dangerously. There's another word here, seasons. Could that be fall, summer, winter, spring? What is it? What is that? Uh, the word here is moed. It is an appointed time. It is. It is also. Um, it also means God's uh, feasts, his festivals. And remember, in uh, as outlined in Leviticus twenty-three, they're not festivals of the Jews. They're festival of the Lord. These are for everybody who wants to be summoned or betrothed. The root of appointed time is to be betrothed. You want to be the bride? Uh, uh, do the feast. Honor the feast. Who is being summoned or betrothed? The congregation, the Adah. Um, and you notice they all have the same two-letter uh, verbal root here. The Yod uh, in, in Ya'ad is deleted, so we're left with the Ayin and the Dalet. Yod is unstable. Uh, so here we have, they're the same word, the same family of words. And it refers to the congregation being betrothed during an appointed time. And these appointed times are the festivals outlined in Leviticus 23. In fact, the Hebrew Old Testament, the Tanakh, the Stones Tanakh, uh, 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 interprets the, that the luminaries were put in the heavenlies for signs and festivals. And these are the festivals of Leviticus 23. We've had signs in the stars since last uh, Yom Teruah. Um, I invite you to go to the website of In That Day and look at, watch those videos. They're very, it's a series of four, I believe. I think they're very helpful. And it seems that last uh, Feast of Trumpets, um, through Sukkot, Venus, the promised child, passed through the body of Betula the Virgin, and it appeared as if she gave birth. And this uh, is very interesting to compare... Um, here we have the Maserot. We're going to have to adjust our thinking a little bit regarding the Maserot. The Maserot is a Hebrew word found in Psalm, in Job uh, 38, I believe. Uh, the Maserot is not the zodiac uh, to tell our personal horoscope or our personal future. It is God writing in the sky to tell the future and to warn the planet or anybody who's listening, those who consent. That's who he's warning, those who consent. He's warning them about what's going to happen. Uh, and as such, Venus or Noga is the promised son or Yeshua. 
Taurus is the ruler or Yeshua. Pleiades is a group of seven. It's actually more than that, but it's commonly called a seven star constellation. Could be the seven congregations of Revelation. And here is the word Mazarot, uh, as found in Job 38. That was the original word for the constellations. Uh, and it's interesting to query whether the uh, lady giving birth in Revelation 12 is the same lady giving birth in Micah 5. If so, look at the end of Micah 5. It heralds end-time events. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. This is an end-time event. Both these ladies are giving, uh, are giving birth. They're both giving birth in the sky where everybody can see them. The sky is the blackboard of the Almighty. And here we have the Revelation 12 the lady and, and how the sky appeared last Yom Teruah. Um, you can see she's clothed with the sun. It's at her shoulder. Uh, the moon is under her feet. In her star she has a, the coma or the coma Bernice. And Venus passed through her body. And it's interesting to watch the videos and to see the stars and planets move. To, to watch their movement during this. I encourage you to do this. At the same time, this last Passover, it appeared as if Venus was visiting the Pleiades, and this is the seven uh, congregations, perhaps, of, um, of Revelation, and Venus, the promised son, or Noga, uh, is he warning them? Is he sharing with them? Is he encouraging them? Is he inspecting them uh, be right before end times? Interesting, Venus then, or Noga, takes a, tri takes a trip right up to the horns of, of Taurus and uh, comes to rest. It seems to do an about face, but we know that's just the orbit. That's just how we see it. Comes, uh, ends up uh, in right between the horns where something very interesting takes place. It is called the transit of Venus. This happens about every Every 121 years, so this is not going to happen again in this century. And it, it is when Venus gets in between the Sun and the Earth, so it appears as if a dark as as a dark dark spot on the on the Sun. And it and in in animation, you can see it just take a track right across the Sun. Um, and this calls forth Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God. In them, He has placed a tent for the Sun. So is the Sun a tent? And the bridegroom coming out of his chamber is Venus, the promised sun, coming out of the tent for the sun. Is the transit of Venus a sign in the heavens that the that the uh, Redeemer, the bridegroom, is coming out of his tent? He's getting up and out, and he's ready to leave. And where is he going to go? Is he going to go and pick up his bride? So the summary of the signs or the otot uh, that we just went over is. Um, Last Yom Teruah, it seemed to be the same sky as what was seen at Yeshua's first advent. Pesach, uh, Venus, or the promised sun, uh, was visiting the seven congregations, June 5 to 6, right after Shavuot, the bridegroom comes out of his chamber. Is he on his way to pick up his bride? Here are what's the otot, the signs, and the sun, and the moon. These are the times in which we live, in which we have lived. This is the recent past, going back to 2008. Let's take a little better look at this. Uh, the, there are uh, types of eclipses. There is a total where the moon gets between the earth and the sun and completely blocks out the sun. Same situation, only the moon does not completely block out the orb. It's closer to earth, so it doesn't quite fill that space than a partial. The blood moon is when the earth gets between the moon and the sun and our shadow is cast upon the moon. And that is the legend in the top left. So here, taking another look at this, we can see a prelude here of annular and total eclipses. We can see bookends here of partial eclipses and blood moons. And we can see uh, a center here of four, uh, a, a tetrad. Uh, tet tetrad is a four, a series of four blood moons uh, accompanied in, in close proximity to some kind of eclipse, either a partial uh, a, a, a complete or an annular. Uh, here is the prelude, and we see it. It goes from partial to full, annular, full, annular, full, and the full was very near the first of Av every summer. Here we have the history of the lunar tetrads that we saw in the middle. This is the eighth time that it will happen it ha since Yeshua. 
It happened uh, in the second century, which is the 100s A.D., uh, about the time of the Roman persecution, it happened uh, in the eight around the eight hundreds. Uh, would this mark the Islamic conquest? Uh, it happened in the late fourteen hundreds. Uh, is this symbol uh, heralding the um, Inquisition? And it ha and it's already happened twice since nineteen forty eight. And this is. The tetrads are very unique. They have happened over feast days, as you see in the um, in the key here. Let's take a look at the end. Let's take a look at that final uh, 70 years. Here we see that there was a lunar tetrad in 1948, 67, and another one right in the middle of this last seven-year period. And in 48, of course, we know that's when Israel was established as a nation. 67 was when they took Jerusalem. What's going to happen in this final seven-year period? Is that the return of the exiles? Is that the abomination? That seven-year period on either end is, is marked by a blood-red moon right over Jerusalem. The first one happened on June 15, 2011. The, the next one will happen July 27, 2018. And on both of these, the both blood moons are between the horns of Taurus, or the ruler. The bookends are identical. Identical. I, I invite you to pause over this and take a look at it. Take a good look at it. This is identical. There are, We have warning signs in the carnal about near future events. If we these near these near future events is, tell us that we should adjust what we're doing. If we want to be safe, we have to adjust what we're doing. Is the ruler of the universe giving us warnings here so we can adjust what we're doing so we're living safely? Does this herald this year? Does the tetrad herald the next year? Does the final does the final bookend herald the next year? If so, then we will see. And again, again, if so, I'm not a prophet. Uh, we will see the final seven. Will we see the final seven year period begin late fall, early winter this year, 2012? Is that what that was heralding? Those blood moons those eclipses if so then here 2013 will be the first yom teruah the first feast of trumpets in the final seven year period here would be the second yom teruah third fourth fifth sixth seventh the seventh trumpet would be the last trumpet Will that be when Yeshua returns? Remember, we don't know the day or the hour, but we will know the season. It's only those who are not watching to whom Yeshua returns as a thief in the night. It's not to those who are living in the light. And that would put the middle of the wheat at Passover 2016. Is that when the abomination happens? Is that when the second exodus happens? I ask people casually, leaders and fellow just, you know, studiers alike, uh, do you have a feeling on that? The consensus seems to be, you know, it will be at that Passover. We'll have to wait and watch and see. And if this is true, then the seven trumpets would line up like this. Are these seven Yom Teruah? If so, the, the last trumpet here would be Yeshua's return. And the rest, these are taken from the seven uh, tr trumpets of Revelation. And I would invite you to, uh, is, this is, what, is this what's going to happen beginning on Yom Teruah of 2013? Again, these are questions. Will the final 70th week begin this uh, fall or early winter? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm raising the alarm. I'm putting this forward for your perusal. And uh, may we all be fasting and praying as we never have done, that we can live not dangerously, uh, ignoring all the warning signs as we drive through this life, but we can heed them 
and we can be prepared to take our foot off the gas and to stop we can be prepared by having the spirit with us remember the parable of the seven virgin of of the of the 10 virgins they couldn't get the oil the holy spirit they didn't have time so let's get it right now while there is time shalom <laughs>